Episode 5 of Invincible Season 2 premieres on Prime Video, bringing viewers back to the action and drama they've grown accustomed to from the series. Mark is seen to be trying to juggle his life as a superhero with his personal obligations, and he is much more out of his element than previously. The first scene of Part 2 is filled with humor and passion. The Sequid invasion that was first revealed in Season 1 is still in progress in Episode 5. Mark unintentionally becomes involved in the effort to halt the millions of extraterrestrial parasites that are headed towards Earth to take over the world. Things aren't getting any better back on Earth as the Lizard League steps up their next plan to dominate the planet. Mark is battered and bleeding after the vicious battle with the Viltrumites on Thraxa. Helped back into the city, Andressa advises him not to hold himself responsible for what transpired. A little time jump later, Mark is assisting with reconstruction. Mark replies that everything will be well without him when Nulzot informs him that a ship is prepared to take him home. Mark is urged by Andressa to return home and bring his brother along. After work, Debbie returns to Earth and receives a bottle of wine. Mark arrives home and stuns her with his brother's story before she has a chance to drink. Though she's not sure what to do, she bans Mark from leaving college, and Mark refuses to ask Cecil to look after his brother. Debbie says she'll take a little leave of absence from work to consider her options. Donald tries to speak with Cecil at the Global Defense Agency by interrupting a briefing. Cecil pays attention when he tells everyone to leave the room, although at first he is disregarded. Given that he has wires in his arm and cannot recall Omni-Man's attack, Donald is curious as to what has happened to him. Donald is shown by Cecil that he has turned into an android and that just his brain remains when they are in a white room. Cecil's statement that he's better off without his memories causes Donald to become agitated, to which Donald responds that it's only better for Cecil. Mark stops William as he is studying in college. When Mark tells William what transpired on Thraxa, William responds that Mark needs to visit the college dean because he hasn't seen Mark in two months. Mark initially visits Amber, but Cecil interrupts him since he's upset that Mark didn't check in as instructed. Mark claims that things look to be okay throughout his absence, particularly because Cecil is aware of his brother. After Mark consents to check in with Cecil, Cecil threatens to remove him from him, but Mark cancels his team. When Mark notices Amber, they both catch up. Amber has had a difficult two months due to the death of her grandfather and a test failure. As Donald looks at the robot, he becomes choked. But a lady informs him their long-range scanners are picking up something, so it's all in his head. Monster Girl is fighting duplicate and training at the Guardians of the Globe headquarters. When Ruddy tries to alert Immortal to Amanda's regressive aging, she overhears him and screams at him for being in charge. As Rex makes fun of Ruddy for his relationship problems, Cecil unexpectedly teleports in, causing a humorous interruption. He gets Shapesmith to explain why he's here by alerting them to the Sequid threat and revealing that Shapesmith is a Martian. Shapesmith claims that since he has always desired to travel to Earth, he knocked out Invincible and the astronauts to take his place. After locating him, the Sequids unite into a hive mind and conquer Mars. After Shapesmith is spared from punishment by the other Guardians, Cecil informs Immortal that Bulletproof, Black Samson, Monster Girl, and Shapesmith will go stop the Sequids. Reddy offers to go with them. Adam after causing harm to people in Chicago and carelessly halting Kilkenan, Eve has had enough of being a superhero. She resides at home. Rex pays her a visit to let her know how much good she accomplishes and to give her confidence that the family she rescued from Kilkenan will recover completely. Then he asks whether she can assist with the Sequids. Debbie is having trouble finding Mark's brother a meal he like. She tells Mark that she tossed out Nolan's books when he asks what she did with them. This surprises Mark as he was hoping to utilize them to track down a clue that would help him fight the Viltrumites. Cecil wants Mark to assist in putting an end to the Sequids before things gets any worse. When Cecil offers to take care of Mark's sibling, Debbie declines. Even Mark hug and catch up on the ship. According to Shapesmith, the Martian battleship may contain millions of Sequids, and the Martians in command of the craft may be able to assist them. Shapesmith claims the cruiser will shoot them down, but Ruddy says he has a plan to get on board. Suddenly, missiles are fired against the spacecraft, which is defenseless. They all float on the ship because Eve surrounds them in a bubble of protection. When Bulletproof draws in a large group of Sequids, violence starts. After stunking a few, Ruddy offers to increase the blast intensity if the group can keep the Sequids at bay for five minutes. Eve creates another bubble of protection, but she is overcome and knocked unconscious by the overwhelming number of Sequids. As a result, Ruddy is left defenseless, and viewers are left on a cliffhanger. Rex, Shrinking Ray, and Duplicate unwind at headquarters and place meal orders while the other Guardians stop the Sequids. Cecil warns them of a Lizard League attack on a US base before they get a chance to consume it. When they try to stop them, they are shocked to discover that the Lizard League has become more formidable and skilled in combat. It's stunning that Kate and Shrinking Ray perish in the battle. Rex attempts to crawl away but is bitten on the hand. Rex orders King Lizard to shoot him after the latter places a pistol to his head. Since Lizard doesn't do so in this episode, it's unknown how long Rex will survive in the following one. 
Alan the alien is seen to be still alive and to have jacked muscles in a scene during the credits. With an apology, Thetis ends Alan's life support, stating that he would either die or grow stronger to face the Viltrumites. In addition, Thetis discloses that he is a Viltrumite who revolted against the Empire. Alan must locate and deliver to Thetis Mark, the second Viltrumite who committed the same transgression. Mark has the key to winning the battle, in Thetis' opinion. Thanks for watching, and if you're new to channel subscribe and click the bell, so you don't miss out latest videos of Media Breakdown.